I've heard people talk about the Big Bang before. They'll accept evolution as a scientific theory, but when they hear the Big Bang, they get weird about it. So let's talk about scientific theories, what they are, and how we know they're accurate. Let's get into it. So what is a scientific theory? A scientific theory is a well-substantiated explanation of some aspect of the natural world based on a body of facts that have been repeatedly confirmed through observation and experiment. So take a look at the germ theory of disease. They had scientific theories before germ theory, which started to gain ground just before the 19th century. Before that, they had miasma theory, which was the idea that cholera, chlamydia, or the Black Plague were caused by air pollution coming from rotting organic material, like dead animals or something. Eventually, Robert Koch came along and developed criteria to demonstrate that a disease is caused by specific organisms. Here's what he came up with. 1. The microorganism must be found in abundance in all organisms suffering from the disease, but should not be found in healthy organisms. 2. The microorganism must be isolated from a diseased organism and grown in pure culture. 3. The cultured microorganism should cause disease when introduced into a healthy organism. 4. The microorganism must be re-isolated from the inoculated, diseased, experimental host and identified as being identical to the original, specific, causative agent. God, that was a mouthful. So Koch came up with these in the 19th century after the first microorganism was discovered by Agostino Bassi between 1808 and 1813. I know I butchered that name. Let's just move on. This is the scientific method at work. We extract data and test and experiment. A scientific theory is established by gathering facts together. Like, for example, the fact that when you drop a pen, it falls. When you spin a bucket of water tied to a rope, the water pushes to the outward edges. When we fly a spaceship, shuttle out of the atmosphere, we can measure and predict to an exact number how much fuel we're going to need. All of this stuff combined into a set of facts. Now we can take those facts and start coming up with ideas for why it's happening. Is it happening because of a magnetic attraction? Do other large bodies have the same attraction? The moon is a certain percentage of the mass of the Earth. Is the gravity of the moon proportional to that of Earth? We start testing these ideas to see if they're true, one after the other. It isn't magnets because a plastic or aluminum space shuttle is attracted to large bodies just as much as an iron or a steel one. That's called falsifiability. To be a theory, it has to have that quality. There must be some way of falsifying it. If we found rabbits in the Precambrian layer of the fossil record, it would falsify evolution. But at a certain point, theories get formed out well enough that the falsifying doesn't destroy the theory, it's just modified to account for the changes. So if we found a set of planets that didn't have a gravitational pull, it wouldn't invalidate the entire theory of gravity. We 100% for sure got some things right with it, but we'd modify it so that it described the newest observations. Same with evolution. There are large swaths that will never be invalidated. They're just facts. We observe gene mutations and natural selection. Those are facts. We just compiled those facts into a theory that describes what's happening in detail. But that's the best thing about science. It's malleability. It's readiness to change. Scientists look at new research papers with skepticism. They don't believe what's in them by default. They're published in peer-reviewed journals, and other scientists across the world replicate the experiments. If somebody gets different results, the research paper is invalidated and pulled. If somebody overturns a major theory, they become famous. It's every scientist's greatest dream to overturn a major theory. They'd be marked down in history for it, immortalized for being the one to overturn evolution or the Big Bang or the theory of gravity. The Templeton Foundation gives out grants every year to scientists who are trying to overturn evolution. If it happened, it would be plastered all over mainstream news. I intended this to be a video about the Big Bang, and I decided to spend that time explaining how a scientific theory works first. I'll lay the groundwork and move on to the Big Bang in the next video. Anyways, that's all I've got for you. Follow me on Twitter, Patreon, Discord, and Facebook. Thanks for watching, guys.